Hey, welcome back to our series on mechanical engineering thermodynamics. Today we're going to talk about forms of energy and energy transfer that we're going to encounter in a typical thermodynamics course. But first off, we need to talk about the first law of thermodynamics. What the first law tells us is that energy is a conserved property. That means energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed from one form to another. What that allows us to do is by keeping track of energy inputs, outputs, and changes within a given system, we can analyze energy flow through a given system. It's similar to um, accounting, what you can do with a bank account. I like to call it energy accounting. Um, if you keep track of your deposits and withdrawals through a bank account, you can figure out how much money is accumulating in your bank account. Energy functions in the same way. So before we start doing any analysis with the first law, we first need to talk about forms of energy that we will encounter. So let's start by expressing a variable for total energy in a system. We'll call it capital E, that'll be in kilojoules. Um, or we can express that on a per unit mass basis, which is sometimes advantageous, and that will be lowercase e in kilojoules per kilogram. And that's going to be consistent throughout all of our energy variables. Now, we are typically concerned with change in total energy of a given system because in thermodynamics, we really can't express an absolute value in energy. So we're usually going to be working with like delta E in kilojoules or delta lowercase e in kilojoules per kilogram, expressing change in energy in the system. So one of the most prevalent forms of energy we'll encounter is internal energy. Um, it's defined as the sum of all microscopic forms of energy in a given system, but really you can think of it as just thermal energy contained in a system. We'll express it as capital U in kilojoules, or we'll express it on a unit mass basis of lowercase u in kilojoules per kilogram. So next let's talk about mechanical energy. So we have three forms of mechanical energy that we'll see. Um, the first is kinetic energy. Most of us will probably be familiar with kinetic energy. It's just energy associated with motion. We express that as one half mv squared or on a per unit mass basis as one half v squared. Then we have potential energy, which is expressed as mass times gravity times height. That's kind of the ability to do gravitational work. Um, or on a unit mass basis, that's just PE equals G times H. Now it's important to note here that in these very using these equations, that's going to be in joules or joules per kilogram. So if we're using the first law where we have kinetic energy and like internal energy, we just need to be consistent with our units. Keep that in mind. Now flow energy is energy associated with the pressure of a flowing fluid. And we can express that as M times pressure times specific volume. And that will be in units of kilojoules if our pressure term is in units of kilopascals. And likewise, on a per unit mass basis, flow energy equals pressure times specific volume in kilojoules per kilogram. Now, most of the time, it's convenient to express internal energy and flow energy as one, um, one variable. We're going to call that enthalpy. Enthalpy, we're going to call, we're going to give, um, value of H, and capital H will define as U plus MPV, so internal energy plus flow energy in kilojoules. And then specific enthalpy, or enthalpy on a unit mass basis, is going to be lowercase h equals U plus PV. Now we're going to use enthalpy quite often through this course, but it's really important to remember how it relates to internal energy and flow energy. Next, we have heat transfer, um, which we're going to call Q, either capital or lowercase, depending on whether you're in kilojoules or kilojoules per kilogram. And this is just heat transfer into or out of a control volume. And now it's important to remember that if we have an adiabatic process, that involves no heat transfer. So Q would equal zero. And then finally, the common, um, one common form of energy we'll encounter is work, um, either mechanical work or boundary work like if you're turning a shaft on a turbine or if you're powering a pump that's going to be work um, we'll just call it capital w or lowercase w 
And in the next video, we're going to talk about different forms of work in a more in-depth basis. So hopefully this was a good introduction to different forms of energy for you. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and stick around for the next video. Thanks.